All right. Uh, uh, so as we begin, just want to reiterate some things. Number one, the global conference is right around the corner, guys, October 11 to 14. And um, there's still room, okay? You know how we say we want to give you the MGMC discount? So some of you have already started uh, inquiring and registering, which is great. Um, and, and some of you, I don't know what you're doing. Maybe you don't need the discount, so you just registered on your own. Awesome. That works too. But if you need the help, please, there's still room to register because my goal is we would have at least 40 MGMCers at the conference, whether it's in person or online. I want all of you to get exposure to what we've been doing for the last 20 years, but also to receive the new things that God's going to do. Amen? And every year, it's always good. But um, I tell you, this, this time around, my friend Jesse Town uh, and Gypsy Town, they're missionaries in Japan. They've been with MGMC for the last year now. And uh, he's, coming, he's coming to the, the conference in person. And he feels like, he's like, Daniel, I feel like something is going to be released in Hawaii for the nations of the world. And he's like, I know, I know for myself, I need to be there physically. And I'm like, wow. And mind you, his wife just had a baby a month ago, okay? So I don't know how Gypsy's letting him go to Hawaii, you know, for two weeks. But she's like, no, you need to go so you can receive this impartation for Japan. You know, like it's going to be powerful. And so I want all of you as much as possible, make every effort, come to the conference, okay? Now, if you cannot come to the conference, then come to Friday night, October 14. It's, it's not called From Hawaii to the Nations. It is called that. I don't know what it's called. But anyway, October 14 at 7 p.m. I'm reading it now. I'm like, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. I swear it's called Ho'olaulea, something like that. Oh, it is that too. Sorry. But you see, we're just having this. There's no performance here. Anyway, just remember, October 14 at 7 p.m., you can register at tohawaii.org. This is a conference in the conference, okay? This is how powerful it's going to be. At the global conference, Tohawaii is partnering with Transformer World, and TOW is giving Tohawaii Friday night, the last night of the conference, to really usher in and receive the nations of the world to Hawaii, but also for Hawaii to send the nations of the world to transform the world. It's going to be a powerful night. And um, uh, so uh, the cost is only $10. Okay, so say you can't even afford the conference, then you can afford the $10 one Friday night. Say you can't make the time for the whole conference, make the time for Friday night, 7 p.m. I'm telling you, it's going to be amazing, guys. So it's two different websites. I should have put this in the PowerPoint. For the conference, you're registering at transformourworld.org. If you're registering for the from, the from Hawaii to the Nations, October 14 at 7 p.m., you're registering at tohawaii.org. Okay? You guys, you guys get me? You guys understand what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. Some of you are smiling at me, and I don't know if that means you understand what I'm saying, or you're just like, yeah, okay, whatever. No, so this is going to be really powerful, guys. Please make every effort for that, okay? Um, I do want to say this. Last week, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, I wasn't here the last couple weeks, and um, last week, Pastor Michelle Okimura did an amazing job. It was awesome. I, I watched it. I listened to it. It was amazing, and um, hey, thank you guys for supporting what MGMC is doing, but personally supporting what she is doing as well. I heard that she brought her, her products, and I tell you, man, she sold like $1,800 worth of books. And so thank you so much for supporting the good work that she's doing. I'm really excited about what she's doing, and that's why I wanted her to come and share. And um, man, you know, that's not the last time she's coming to MGMC. Let me just say that, okay? <laughs> it was amazing. But while, while you guys were here, I was over at Punchbowl, um, uh, Punchbowl Cemetery, and I had the great privilege of being at the Nisei, uh, 17th Annual Nisei Soldiers Memorial Service. And um, this happened because of Carol Hayashida. Uh, Carol Hayashida works for Unitas Hawaii. And Part of the team she's on, there is a former pastor named Cal Takara, and he, he, was, he is a direct descendant of a 442nd um, soldier, Nisei veteran, and, um, and, and, but he wanted to pass this on, 
And so he asked Carol and Craig Nakatsuka, hey, do you know any pastors that would be willing to take this? And, you know, our, our heritage at MGMC is we honor our seniors, right? We honor them, and, um, and that's just a part of our heritage, who we are. So they recommended, Carol recommended, Craig recommended, Daniel Chinan and myself to, 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 to do this. So he emails me, and he's like, hey, would you be inter- interested in this thing? That happens at Punch Bowl once a year. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. He said, like, great, I'm going to give your name and number to the president of the Nisei Veterans Legacy, and they're going to interview you. I'm like, whoa, wait, I thought I was just doing like a service here. You know, like I didn't know there's an interview involved. So the president calls me, um, uh, Lynn, and she tells me, hi, are you a direct descendant of a Nisei veteran? I'm like, strike one. No, I'm not. You know, I'm like, I'm not a direct descendant, but I am a direct recipient, you know, uh, and, and I just shared my heart of what we are all about at MGMC and who I am, and I'm really thankful. Uh, my generation is really thankful. And so she's like, okay, I appreciate this interview. I'm going to go to the board now and present to them your answers, and I'll let you know. I'm like, okay, all right, great. The next day, she says, you got it. I'm like, awesome. So this is like earlier in the year. I totally forgot about, I'm going to be, I'm not going to lie. I totally forgot about this. A month ago, she emails me, Daniel, are you ready for the Nisei Veterans Service in September? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. Yeah, Lynn, I'm totally ready to go. I'm, yeah, I'm psyched on this, right? Little did I know, the same weekend of the Nisei Veterans Legacy, was a very busy week for us. We had the town hall meeting, you know, on the day before. I mean, it was a very busy week for us. We had Michelle coming, all that, right? And so, um, uh, praise God, Marion led last week's Sunday. I go to the rehearsal. I'm like, you have a rehearsal for memorial service? This is weird, right? So anyway, I show up at Punch Bowl, and it is a one-hour-long rehearsal. And I'm like sitting there. I'm like, this is kind of serious. Like, <laughs> this is not no, like I come in and share some words, invocation, benediction, done, you know. This is kind of serious. So I meet with Marion on Friday and I'm telling him what it's about. Marion is like, this is a big deal. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, this is a, he's like, this is a big deal, Daniel. You got to understand, like, if, any, if there's any memorial service that's a big deal, it is for the Nisei veterans. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right. So it started to dawn on me. And then I show up on Sunday morning And um, Royal Hawaiian Band is there, and they are playing incredible music. And uh, just to show you guys how big of a deal this is, these are all the people involved in the program. Okay, they were not all there on the rehearsal. I'm just going to tell you that right now. But these are all the people involved in the program. And you can see the cadets in the back, and those are three ROTCs from three high schools, or maybe it was four high schools, I can't remember. But all the people in the first two rows, these are all the people involved in the program. I swear not all those people were there at the rehearsal, okay? Maybe there was 10 people. But anyway, I show up on Sunday morning. I'm like, wow, God, this is a big deal, right? Like, I got to get myself ready. I got to prepare something for this program. The news channels are there. I don't know if you guys saw Hoi News Now did some coverage on it. You know, and Olelo was covering it. I'm like, this is kind of a big deal. Like Marion said, I'm... I'm a slow learner. I'm catching up, right? And so I, I and then they, they say, okay, Pastor, Pastor Chinen, you're, you're part of the program. You're going to sit on stage. And I'm like, what? No, I don't want to, I don't want to sit on stage. Like, I'm sorry. You have to sit on stage at the front next to the Buddhist priest along with the three other speakers. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, this is, this is crazy. This is serious and this is crazy for me. And I don't perform. You guys know that. I do not perform, so I'm like, okay, Lord, it's by grace that I'm going to be able to sit up front, you know, while, you know, uh, uh, we're going to honor these veterans. Now, let me say this. There are only five veterans from the 100th Battalion and 442nd that are able to be there, primarily because, you know, they're all in their mid-90s, you know, if not older. And um, last year, they did it online, and there were 20 veterans, and now there's only five left. I mean, that, that are, you know, uh, part of this thing. And so this was, like, really an, an incredible moment for me as I'm sitting on stage and I see these, these veterans. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So the Lord tells me, I want you to go, I want you, you're on stage already, but when you go to the, to the microphone, 
You can look around for a little bit. The mayor is there. The governor was there. I mean, again, this is a big deal, right? It's dawning on me when I get there on Sunday morning. And he's like, you can look at them and, you know, show your respect in the front row because all the VIPs in the front row. But I want you to directly address the Nisei veterans. So I go up on stage and I'm standing there and I look at the Nisei veterans. The Lord tells me to share, Kodomo no tamini, for the sake of the children. Right? And that was the word that the Lord really wanted me to share, to honor all of them. Um, and, and really, it was such a moving thing because um, while I was sharing this, uh, you see how there's people, the color guards in the back, and there's cadets in the front. Well, there were cadets surrounding the tent the whole time while I was doing the, the invocation. And I shared, Kodomo no tamini. And if there's ever a fitting time to share that phrase, it's when youth are surrounding the tent of these veterans and people who are benefiting from it. And it was, a, it was a very special moment for me to be able to share that and saying, I am here. In fact, we are all here because of you veterans. You know? And it was just this moment of deep gratitude that I didn't earn because I'm not a direct descendant, but I am blessed because of the spiritual inheritance here at MGMC where we every, every time there's a senior. We honor our seniors. We honor our veterans. And what just came out of me, you know, is just who we are, is who I am. And it was this moment for all of us to recognize these veterans and say thank you to them, you know. And so I shared that. Now, while I'm sharing this, uh, after, after I share that, uh, it, we all rise for the national anthem. And um, this girl here at the microphone, she's a Punahou student. She's singing the national anthem. And she has a beautiful voice, okay? It's a great voice. And we're all standing, facing the flags, right? Um, and uh, uh, if you've ever been a part of football games, right? You know, national anthems, hoi pono i, everybody's shouting and singing, right? Like, it's just something everybody gets into. Not at a memorial service, okay? At a memorial service, there's only one voice you hear. And it is the singer's voice. And it's, you know, it's a beautiful voice, but it's kind of like shame, right, if you're going to sing, right? Like, you don't want to sing. And primarily, predominantly attended at this service are Asians. So Asians understand, I am not going to make a fool of myself. Even though I want to sing this song, I'm not going to sing, right? Now, while she's singing, I'm facing the flag, but behind me uh, are the veterans, the five veterans with their loved ones. I can hear a couple of people singing and i don't know if it's the veterans or not but i hear someone singing very loud off key and you know in their like expressing themselves so i'm like i just got i gotta look i know i'm on stage right like i'm like this i know i'm on stage but i just gotta look right so i look i look behind me and it's the five veterans singing their hearts out and it was such a moment of, i'll tell you Mary, this it was such a moment of deep pride of being an american and also, we're surrounded by the 50 flags. And we're all standing in honor of our country and the sacrifice of our nieces. And the ones who are singing the loudest over the girl's voice, mind you, which is a beautiful voice, don't get me wrong, were the veterans, the five veterans singing their hearts out. That was one of my highlights of all time, guys, that I'll never forget of being reminded of their sacrifice and being grateful for that and these men and women being grateful for the flag, being grateful for our country. And I had never been prouder to be an American. I mean, it really was this moment of like, oh my gosh, I am so, so thankful to be an American and so thankful for the sacrifice of our nieces, you know? And so that was my first highlight. Uh, I'm just sharing some highlights with you guys, if you guys don't mind. Oh yeah, this is a picture of a couple of them. There they are, just singing. You know, just singing along, and you can see they're aged, you know, and uh, they got to use canes. In fact, the other three, uh, other, uh, two out of the four of them were in wheelchairs, and one of the guys in the wheelchair felt so strongly about the flag, and the MC says, you know, if you can stand, if you cannot, no worries, you know, she's really talking to the veterans. He gets up out of his wheelchair, and he's like struggling to stand, and he sings the national anthem. I mean, there is no excuse at that point, you know what I mean? Zero excuse. But it was such a moment of just great blessing um, as, as I got to see that. My, my second highlight um, 
was um, uh, being able that, okay, I am so naive. Okay, on the right is Governor George R. Yoshi. Um, I didn't know that. I went and said thank you and all that stuff. My, my dad's like, that's, that's Governor R. Yoshi. And I'm like, is that a big deal? He's like, that's the former governor. I'm like, I am so sorry, Dad. I, I did not represent the family name very well. But I did say thank you, you know, for his leadership and, you know, and all that stuff. But I don't show that for our Yoshi. I, sh I share this photo because of the man next to him, the one on the left. And um, we're, uh, I got a chance to personally thank all of them because as you saw earlier in the photo, I was able to be in the photo op with, uh, because I was part of the program. So I was able to personally thank each one of the veterans. Whereas before that, they weren't allowing a lot of people to, to go and uh, you know, personally shake hands for obvious reasons, COVID and health and they're older. You know? and so, but I was really blessed. Uh, to be able to go one by one and say thank you. So I come to this man with the hat, this gentleman in the hat, and I, I say to him, hey, you know, thank you so much for your service, for your sacrifice, for your leadership, uh, for our generation. I really appreciate that. And he looks at me, and, and I can't really see his eyes because I see his hat, and I'm standing, you know, above him, and I can see tears rolling down his cheeks. And he pulls me in, closer so I can see him. He says, what's your name? And I said, oh, my name's Daniel. And he says, how old are you? I said, I'm 38. And he says, you remind me of myself when I was a young man. And you have brought youth to me today. Thank you for honoring me. And it was the highlight of my day. You know, and he, he, he's shaking my hand and I'm crying, he's crying. And um, he's not letting go of my hand now. Now it's getting awkward because there's a line of people wanting to shake his hand, and I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, thank you, sir, you know, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry, I got to let go, and he's like, he's just smiling and shaking my hand, I'm like, all right, I, I, I'm sorry, I got to move on, right, but it was such a blessing, it was such a blessing, and um, at this service, a couple of things, you know, uh, those are two of my highlights, and, you know, uh, not to mention, I was able to go up to the governor, and told Governor Ige, hey, Governor Ige, I want you to know we pray for you. We love you. Thank you for your leadership during this time in COVID. I want you to know our family prays for you every week. And I'm looking him in the eye because, you know, he's short like me. So we're able to see eye level, right? I'm looking him in the eye and I say, hey, thank you so much. I didn't call him Uncle David, as Aaron said. Did you call him Uncle David? Because that's his name on our prayer sticks because we personalize the people, our leaders, right? So Uncle David is on there. And I was like, no, I didn't call him Uncle David. I should have. Uncle Ron would have done that. But anyway, um, you know, so I say, hey, you know, I want you to know our family prays for you every week. We really appreciate your leadership. And he begins to tear up. His eyes begin to tear up. They well up with tears. Because it is so hard to lead in this time, isn't it? It's so difficult. Um, th that was great. That's just not even the main highlight for me. But anyway, the point, though, is that I'm at this service filled with leaders. I'm in this, room, this tent at Punchbowl full of leaders. And I'm sitting there finally realizing this is a big deal. I am at the service. This is a big deal. And while I'm sitting there, my strongholds start coming out. I don't belong here. You know, like, this is not, this is not, I don't deserve to be here. I didn't work for this. Cal just is looking for a young guy, and I just happen to be a young guy, an Asian guy, you know, and I don't even really qualify, like, because I'm not even a direct descendant. And all these strongholds start coming out, right? And the Lord tells me during the program, this is your heritage. You belong here. And he keeps saying that to me. You belong here. You belong here. And I tell the Lord, Lord, if I belong here, what allows me, what qualifies me to belong here? And he tells me a verse that Moses said to the people of Israel before they're about to enter the promised land. And, he, and the verse was, you will inherit the land. This is your inheritance. You will reap where you did not sow, but it is yours. Isn't that interesting? In a day and age, in our culture, we say it's yours if you worked for it. You can reap if you sowed it. But right there in the Bible, the Lord says, you will reap for which you did not sow. The land is yours. And so he tells me that, and he tells me, when you go up to the microphone, I'll, share, I'll, share, I'll tell you what to share. But I want you to stand tall. And I'm like, God, I'm 5'5". Five five. Like, I mean, I don't want stage, but, you know, I don't want to be like, you know, try to overdo myself. He's like, no, no, no. When you, walk, when you walk across, like, I was across the stage. Like, 
at the microphone. I was on the other side of the stage, okay? So people could see me walking across the stage, you know? And so I, uh, earlier before the program, I tell the MC, you know, should I just kind of like be really quick and walk up, you know, because I don't want to like draw attention. She's like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Again, not wanting to draw attention, Lord tells me, you walk across the stage with your chest up and your head held high because this is going to communicate that you belong and you're supposed to be here. And I'm like, Lord, I don't feel like I belong. And I don't feel like I'm supposed to be here. He's like, well, then you need to start walking it out. You need to start walking in this thing. And so I'm walking across the stage, you know, walking high, head held high, chest out right. And I'm walking like I belong there. And as I'm doing that, I'm starting to embrace this role that God has called me to walk in. This time around in Accelerator, the Lord told me at the beginning, this is my fifth time, by the way, taking the Accelerator. If you're wondering where this is going, we'll get there. Don't worry. Okay, I'm, I'm building it up here. This is the fifth time I'm taking the Ecclesi Accelerator, and he tells me, do you believe you're going to, tra- do you believe Hawaii is going to be transformed? I'm like, yes, Lord, Amen. Do you believe you have a role in transforming Hawaii? Yes, Lord, amen. Do you, believe, um, do you believe that I will use you specifically to be a part of transforming Hawaii? I don't know. <laughs> you know, he's like, uh, how we, how, how's Hawaii going to get transformed if you don't step up? I want to transform Hawaii, but every single person who believes that needs to all step up. They all need to own it. And um, so I'm at the service, and he reminds me of that. This is part of your role. You need to show everybody here that the church is here to stay and it is relevant and belongs, you know? And so I'm going up there and I'm like, I am not feeling good, right, obviously, but I'm, of course I'm walking it out, I'm walking it out. And, um, and, I, and, and I get through it and it's, it, it works out, it's amazing. Lynn's over there like, yeah, that was great, that was awesome, right? And I'm looking at her and I'm like, this is just what I do, like, every day. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not trying to perform. I'm just being who I am. And the Lord shares with me, that is the ecclesia. You don't realize what you got and who you are because you've been, as Jesus said, hiding your light under a bushel. You know what I mean? Like, you've been giving in. This is crazy. The number one, the stronghold of Japan, I confirmed this with Jesse and being a missionary from Japan and to Japan, the, you know, guys ever heard the phrase, the nail that stands up shall be pounded down, right? Or hammered down, right? I am feeling this stronghold at the Nisei Veterans Legacy Memorial Service. It's rising up in me. And you know what it, you know what it took for me to rise above it? Looking at these veterans, these five veterans who were the nails that chose to stood up in a time of racial prejudice. In a time of great sacrifice, they were the ones that chose to be the nails that stood up. Even if they got pounded down, they said, we're coming on. We're still coming back. We're still going to choose to stand up. And it was by their legacy and by their courage and leadership, I was able to say, I'm going to stand up too. And I do belong. You know, so that day was a victory. But later on in the week, I'm feeling totally down and depressed. I tell Uncle Peter, man, I, I can't do this, man. Like, I believe Hawaii is going to get transformed. And I believe, Uncle Peter, that God is going to use Hawaii through the culture of Aloha and Ohana to transform the nations of the world. He's like, amen, that's going to happen. I was like, but I am struggling. This whole Ecclesia Accelerate, I've been struggling to stand up, to be strong, to be the leader that God is calling me to be to be the church that God is calling us to be the church. Not because it's, uh, I'm sure there's going to be difficulties, but really because it's emotionally difficult, right? It's mentally difficult to take on that burden, to take on that responsibility, because I had this belief that the nail that stands up shall be pounded down. And he's like, well, tell me about that, because he's Hawaiian. He's like, I don't know what that means. Like, what's that about? I was like, really, what it means is, All the other guys, all the other nails, so to speak, are saying, you're making us look bad, so we're going to pound you down, and you're going to get punished. And that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of rejection, and I'm afraid of failing, and I'm afraid of bringing shame to everybody else. Am I talking to anyone here? Right? You know, I'm afraid of bringing shame to everybody, you know, and I'm representing the church. I'm representing my family, and I'm representing, he's like, no, 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 let me tell you who you represent. You represent the Father. 
and you are a son of God. He, I'm like, whoa, what's going on right now? We're in the water, you know, surfing. And he's like, he's like, Daniel, you are sealed in Christ Jesus. You've been baptized with him. Power Encounter, Ecclesi Accelerator, Unit 6, right? You've been baptized and saturated, marinated in the Holy Spirit. You've been sealed with Christ. And I'm like, whoa, you're right. He's like, you are a new creation. And I'm like, oh my gosh, the old is gone, the new is coming. It's amazing, right? It's, this is all happening to me. He's telling me this, and he says, Here's a problem. I'm like, okay, yes, tell me, tell me. That's exa- I, I need to know what my problem is. Here's the problem. Jesus died on the cross. You believe that, right? I'm like, yeah. His blood, his blood uh, covered your sins, right? Yeah. He's like, did the curtain rip or not rip in the temple? And I'm like, oh, of course it ripped. He's like, but how come it hasn't ripped in your heart yet? And I'm like, oh, man, you got me good now. Because <laughs> I've disqualified myself thinking I don't belong in the inner part of the temple, right? And um, side note, I experienced a little bit of that, the Holy of Holies. <laughs> I went to see my uh, Coptic priest friend up at St. Mark's, and they have something called the inner sanctum. I, I, this is amazing. This is so new to me, right? He's giving me the tour. He's like, hey, let me take you to the inner sanctum. I'm like, oh, I, you know, do I qualify? Like, do I got to be certified or something? Like, he's like, no, no, come with anyone can enter the inner sanctum because God wants all of us to experience his presence in the inner sanctum, but it requires you to come into it. I'm like, wow, isn't that amazing, right? So God tore the veil, but he wants us to come into the Holy of Holies. But as a result of that separation, we disqualify ourselves because we haven't earned it. We haven't whatever, whatever, the the mindset, the stronghold, right? So I'm struggling through this. He tells that to me. I say, okay, you got to pray for me because I need your help, right? Um, because I struggle with this. So he prays for me. I kid you not, I feel so much more freer afterwards. I'm like, I told him, this is the equivalent. If you surf, you know the feeling. I tell Uncle Peter, I feel like I just did a whole surf session. Like, I'm ready to paddle in already, man. Like, this is amazing. Like, the fulfillment, the peace, the, the, the comfort I feel was from this prayer. This stronghold has lifted off of me, and I am ready to be the salt. I am ready to be the light. He's like, that's exactly the kind of attitude that's going to change Hawaii. Don't you feel that? It's that kind of attitude that's going to change Hawaii when you can say, God, use me. God, use me. I want to be that vessel. I want to be the salt. I want to be the light. And Lord, if it requires me to be in foreign environments like a Nisei Veterans Memorial Service, Lord, whatever it takes, I'm willing to do that. Right? I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Side note, I see Charles over here. I got, I got to see Mel Kanishige. We sat next to each other, and he's like, hey, you're Daniel Chinen. I'm like, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? He's like, he's like, oh, yeah, I know people who go to your church. I'm like, oh, okay, right. That's cool, right? I didn't know what a big deal Mel is. I'm so sorry. I probably, I probably shamed my name again. You know what I mean? So anyway, was, dad's like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, I'm sorry, dad. You know, sometimes you just got to go through that kind of stuff, right? The Nell stands up, right? Anyway, so... Um, uh, so all that to say, guys, I want to share this with you. Oh, before I forget, if you want to watch the service, um, you can watch it via Facebook. Just type in Olelo Community Media, or you can uh, watch it on demand on Olelo October 23rd. I don't know what time, but October 23rd. <laughs> all right, so, and they're going to air the service there, but um, that's only if you don't have Facebook. You can watch it on Facebook uh, if you're interested in that. And all these photos... By the way, uh, was his name Jerome Osterman, and his wife is Lisa, uh, former name Louie. She used to be at MGMC. She was a part, of, you remember? Yeah, so she was a part of, she's married to Jerome, the photographer, which is amazing. Um, so anyway, um, let, me, let me get to the verse here. Now the sounds shall be pounded down, right? And I want to say this over all of you guys, as I'm learning how to walk in my new created order, that 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And I want to say this to you, that we are new creations, but if you struggle with the same stronghold like me, it's like you're standing in the outer courts of the temple, wanting to go into the Holy of Holies, wanting to go into the inner sanctum, so to speak, but disqualifying yourself. Or maybe even externally, people say, what did you do to deserve to be here? 
right? When it's the Lord is the one who has qualified you and says, you are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. And if that is you, the Lord is saying to you, it's time for you to remove that basket, to remove that bushel. It's time for you to let your light shine. It's time for you to be the salt of the earth. Can I tell you something about salt here in this ecclesia, whether you're online or right here in person? We don't appreciate and realize how anointed we are. Now, I'm saying that because my dad has been saying that to me for many years, and he's been saying it to me this past week. I don't know how many times, like, he's scolding me, and I'm like, Dad, I get it. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. He's like, no, you don't get it. You don't understand. It has to take someone like a governor, Governor Ige, to tell you, hey, I really appreciate that invocation. Thank you for sharing such heartwarming words. It takes someone like a Lin Hirakuji to be like, that was amazing. I want you back next year. You know what I mean? It has to be somebody else that you don't even realize who they are, really, to, to, for you to appreciate it. But when the Lord is telling you that, you can't receive it. You can't receive this affirmation. And I'm telling you guys right here, we are anointed. We are blessed for the gifts and callings and anointing we have. And we got to start stepping in, puffing our chest up, walking tall, and removing any baskets that are in the way. Because it's that kind of attitude and understanding that allows us to walk in our God-created order to be the salt, to be the light that's going to transform Hawaii. And as a result, Hawaii will transform the world. You guys hear what I'm saying? I, I'm not trying to scold you guys. I'm just, you know, I'm a little passionate, right? But, okay. But I'm trying to call you guys out, okay? So if that's you, I want you to stand right now. And I know that's kind of shameful, but it's okay. You can be in a room full of shame people, okay? So it's okay in some ways, right? But the Lord is calling you. It's easy to stand here in the house of God, but this is just practice so you can stand tall when you leave the four walls of the church. Because church is not where you go to. Church is who you are. Amen? Amen. And so I want to pray for all of you right now. And I've received this fresh impartation from Uncle Peter. And, um, uh, and I just want to release this over you. Uh, well, actually, before I pray for you, let's, let's just confess to the Lord. Yeah? Why don't you repeat after me? Father God, I confess to you that I have given in to the shame, to the stronghold that has, that has um, limited me and kept me from shining my light, from being the salt and being the vessel to transform Hawaii, to transform my community, to transform my family, and even transform myself. I ask for your forgiveness, for limiting your power. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that the power of Jesus Christ, the blood that was shed, not only covers my sin, but elevates me and gives me a new DNA a new identity to stand tall, to be the salt, to be the light, wherever I am, in the name of Jesus. I belong in the inner sanctum. I belong in the Holy of Holies. All separations be broken now in the name of Jesus. Let me just pray for you, Lord. I just declare, Lord, the power of 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that each one of these individuals, these sons and daughters of God, are new creations in the name of Jesus. The old is gone and the new has come. And I call you forth, sons and daughters of God, to shine your light, to be that city on a hill, to not put a basket over your head, but to shine your light to be the salt 
that blesses the community, that blesses Hawaii, that will bless the nations of the world. In the name of Jesus, we tear down every veil that has disqualified each person from walking in the holiness, from walking in the gifting, from walking in the anointing of God. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, we break it off and we connect ourselves to our God, to our Father, our Heavenly Father, to the Spirit of God that brings power, that brings love in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Wow. Woo. Wow. All right, you can have a seat. You can have a seat. All right. Wow. That was good, and that took longer than I expected. So that was, just, that was just one part of what I want to do today. That was just one part, okay? One part. Hey, I've been gone for a couple weeks, guys. You know what I mean? So anyway. Okay, so what I want to talk to you guys about today, that was part of it. The second part is I want to do an Aloha mid-series review, okay? Because we've been in an Aloha series, took a couple weeks break, and um, I thought, you know what? This would be good for us to review Aloha as we continue to move forward. <clears throat> and um, aloha is, if you break it down, is aloha, right? And, and we know this, alo means face or presence, and ha means breath or receiving um, and giving life, right? So what is that uh, when you put the two together? Aloha means to face someone and give or receive life. It's more than saying hello or goodbye. It is the exchange of life with one another, Right? That's, why we, that's why we're on this series on aloha, because we want to give life. We want to impart life to one another, right? In fact, um, Jesus talked about aloha. Uh, he says, your love or aloha for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Right? That's why we're doing this series, guys. Not so that you can memorize the law of aloha, which is great, but it's so that we can live according to God's aloha. And we can operate in this way with one another uh, in our families, in our spheres of influences, and um, in, in our churches, and, and around the world. That's what we want to do. And we want to we wanna pass it on to one another. All right, so just by way of review, whoa, what happened? Sorry. Here we go. Um, this is the cards that you guys all got. I, I got them in the front here for you if you need more, okay? But um, just by way of review, uh, f uh, not funny story, but I, I've been talking about law all the time, Okay. At the Nisei Veterans Legacy, talked about Aloha. Maybe that's why they're impressed by it, right? Uh, talked, about, talked about it at the town hall meeting, right? I mean, this is the essence of who we are, that's why. It's not just something we talk about, it's who we are. It's what we live out. And so what is Aloha? It starts with Akahai. Say Akahai, right? And Akahai is kindness expressed with tenderness. And here's a statement that Alan Cardenas came up with. Can you guys see that? That's kind of small. So I'll just have you repeat after me. I will control myself no matter what you do. Right? That's what Akahai means, that I will control myself no matter what you do. Now, my son, as a witness here, knows I don't do well at Akahai, okay? That's why I'm doing this series for me, really. I'm just kidding. But it's for all of us, right? We all got to grow in being able to control ourselves no matter what someone else does. We got to Akahai, Right? We got to learn to embody the Aloha spirit beginning with Akahai. Second one is Lokahi. Say Lokahi. Right? And Lokahi is unity expressed with harmony. And um, you can repeat after me. I will choose connection over distance. And we already talked about this. Choosing connection is the hardest thing right now. COVID has only made it even harder to choose connection over distance. And, um, you know, side note, President Biden said the pandemic is over, right? It's over. And yet we're still starting, we're still struggling with, to, with connection. You know what I mean? It's hard. It's hard. But we've, we, we have to learn how to lokahi. We have to choose to connect over distance, right? And the next one is olu olu. Say olu olu. Olu olu is agreeable, expressed with pleasantness. And um, you can repeat after me. I will listen respectfully to understand. Man, you know how, you notice the statements are like getting harder and harder? 
<laughs> right? Like, I, I was going to talk about this. Like, I will listen so that I can talk. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. I will listen kind of so that I can talk. Right? Like, no, no. It's I will listen respectfully to understand. Not I will listen respectfully to wait for you to be done. You know what I mean? Like, no, no, no. That's not what Olu Olu is. Right, we're going to talk about that in coming weeks. Don't worry, okay? It's going to get good, right? So I will listen respectfully and understand. Next one is ha'a ha'a. Say ha'a ha'a. Right? It is humility expressed with modesty. And you can repeat after me. I will bring out the treasures in people. I will bring out the treasures in people. And uh, yesterday I was sharing with my neighbor, uh, neighbor and his small group. They asked me about a month ago to share with his small group how to talk to people so that they'll be receptive to the gospel, right? I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. One is like, this is such a blessing, you know what I mean? And I was able to share with them, and I was able to just affirm each one of the members in their small group, you know, this is how God made us to be. And you know what? At the end of it, they're like, we can totally do this. I'm like, yes, because we bring out the treasures in people. And when we do that, when we call out the treasures in people, we start walking in our God-created order, Amen. And, of course, you can't discount the Ron Yoshida card. You know what I mean? So I, of course, I shared that with them, and they're like, I'm taking this. Anyway, so, yeah, ha, ha, ha. I'll bring out the treasures in people. And then lastly is ahunui. Say ahunui. And ahunui is patience expressed with perseverance. And you can repeat after me. I will manage my priorities and time so I will burn and not burn out. Right, and the, again, all these statements are really tough to do. That's why we're doing a whole series on this, right? And as we said at the beginning of the series, aloha is something you give, and it's true, but you cannot give away what you don't have. It begins with receiving it. We have to first receive aloha in order to give aloha, right? And so that's partly why I wanted to talk to you about this today, guys, is because it's so important that we understand how powerful aloha is and the Apostle Paul said this about aloha. He said, three things will last forever. I mean, wow, that's, that's significant. Faith, hope, and love. And of the things that last forever, the greatest of these is love. So we should not be lacking in love. We should be filled and overflowing with God's aloha, with his akahai, lokahi, olu olu, ha ha and ahonui. Amen? But let's be honest, man. It's tough, right? It's tough to do that, right? Because in order to... Give aloha, we have to, alo, we got to face one another to give the breath of life. And in order to give breath to one another, we have to alo the Lord. We have to constantly be in the presence of God. And it takes reminding us, this review, so to speak, reminding ourselves that it begins first with receiving his aloha in order to give his aloha. And, and part of that covenant as we're on this series is, um, is walking through these three things that we're covenanting to. The first one is um, you're going to covenant to receive God's aloha. I'm just summarizing this for you guys. Receiving God's aloha. Every day, two to three times a day, you're going to meditate and reflect on God's aloha, right? Using the breathing technique that we've learned, right? Breathing in slowly, breathing out slowly, but really focusing your thoughts on God's aloha, right? And that really helps. It really helps for sure. How many of you guys have been doing that by show of hands? Okay, several of you, which is great. That's awesome. Okay, I don't know what happened with the rest of you. Maybe you got to grab these cards or something, right? Okay, and the second one is, yeah, you're receiving God's aloha, and then now you're going to embody aloha, right? You're going to experience God's aloha. You're going to live aloha with your family. And at the dinner table or at any meal time, once a week, as a family, you're going to share three answers to these three questions. What part of God's aloha did you experience today? What part of God's aloha did you show today? And who is someone around this table that you want to affirm in how they showed aloha today, right? And um, we do this every week as a family. Ben doesn't really understand what he's talking about, so he just says akahai all the time. Um, and that's okay. That's all right, though. He's learning how to get ingrained in this culture of aloha as a family, right? How many of you guys have done this with your families by a show of hands? Okay, less people. Okay, that's all right. That's okay. Covenant cards are up here in the front. Okay, okay. Here you go. And the last one is this, that you're going to covenant to share God's aloha 
with everyone and anyone. That's why I said I talk about it all the time wherever I go, right? Because uh, I really am wanting people to experience God's aloha. I firmly believe this, that Hawaii has the key to transforming the nations of the world. And it is aloha. It's in the word of God. Aloha will last forever. But how can they know aloha if the people of Hawaii are not embodying aloha? And how can Hawaii know aloha if we're just keeping it as a law rather than going back to the roots of aloha, which is in God's word and the heart of God, right? And it begins with us receiving it, and it begins with us understanding and embracing this thing, lambano, to take hold of, right, as, as dad has talked about before. But I want to share with you one last thought and as time has run by us really, uh, really fast here, is one final thought is that let's just be, this is kind of a fair assumption. You've been open to the teaching of aloha, right? I mean, that's just fair to say that you guys are like, yeah, this is great. This is all about, it's awesome. You're open to the teaching of aloha, but this is the thing. But now it's time to take hold of the spirit of aloha, okay? You know why I'm saying that? It's evident that we haven't yet taken hold of the spirit of aloha, just by the lack of raising of hands when I asked you guys those three questions, right? And so I'm not trying to bring shame here. Let's just, this is just an assessment, evaluation. How are you doing, right, uh, at, at Aloha? And it's like, okay, I'm open to it, but I haven't taken hold of it. And I came, up this revela I came to this revelation in Acts, uh, Acts chapter 8, I believe it was. Acts chapter 8, verses 14 to 17. This is an amazing story about Philip. Philip and, and Peter and John uh, you know, already Stephen has, is the first martyr. He's been stoned and killed. And so the church disperses. And what's cool is that Philip was one of the co-workers of Stephen. You know, the seven, um, uh, 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 dad calls them servers, you know, or waiters, you know, who are waiting on tables. Uh, and, and, and so what's cool is that Philip went from serving tables to saving souls, which is pretty cool, right? Like, that's amazing. And so he goes to the Samaritan village and... Um, and, and they're, like, totally open to Philip's message. They're like, this is awesome. And this is what it says. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria, talking about Philip, heard uh, that Samaria had received, which is the word decomai, say decomai, which is interesting, right? Because I always thought the word received meant lambano, which dad talked to us about before, had received decomai, the word of God. They sent Peter and John to them who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might lambano, say lambano, that they would receive the Holy Spirit. So they hear about what Philip is doing, and they, they hear, man, the people have received what Philip's talking about. This is amazing. But while they're going there, they get the revelation. They haven't received the Holy Spirit. They haven't fully received what this is about, what Jesus is all about. You know, they received the word of Jesus, but they haven't received the spirit of Jesus. And I want to give you guys a definition of the word decomai because I think it's really interesting and fitting to our series right now. Is that the word decomai means to be open and welcoming to receive. So again, it's the same word receive, but instead of, but instead of uh, lambano taking hold of, it's saying I'm open to receiving you. Isn't that interesting? And Oftentimes, let's just be real here, I tend to think of receiving as more decomai. I'm open to receiving it. Hey, we're going to pray impartation. Let's receive it. I'm going to decomai. I'm going to be open to receiving it. And that's really good. We need to do that, just as the Samaritans did. But when Peter and John came, they moved from decomai to lambano. You guys understand the difference there? They moved from being open to taking hold of. And that is something that I believe what God is saying to us as we're on this series, that it's important to be open to the teachings on aloha, but don't stop there. Don't stop there. You must now take hold of, you must now lambano take hold of the spirit of aloha. And before you say, oh, I've already taken hold of it. Well, let's just see where you're at with this covenant again. You know what I mean? Like, have you truly taken hold of it in your life, receiving God's aloha? Have you really taken hold of it and had the awkward conversation with your spouse at the mealtime and say, hey, I just want to tell you, you showed this part of aloha today. I really want to affirm you in that. Or have you done that with the greater family and said, 
hey guys, you know, I know that we normally just have our own conversations or we have this kind of conversation at the dinner table, but I want us to be a family of aloha, and so we're going to talk about aloha tonight. We're going to hand this card around, and we're going to share how, how each one showed aloha or how you experienced God's aloha today. And I know I'm hitting some strongholds because I was one of them, okay? I started this thing with my family. You know how hard it is, right, to do this with three kids, right? A middle schooler, right? Um, Nine-year-old and a four-year-old. You know what I mean? But, it, but once you start doing it, it really starts to take momentum. And then, of course, being on mission as you're going throughout your day. And I believe it was the Lord's affirmation that my neighbor would ask me, to talk to them about the gospel, to teach his small group how to teach people how to be receptive to the gospel because I'm giving them aloha. I, I firmly, I'm not trying to say that in, again, it sounds like I'm bragging, but I'm telling you, it's the spirit of God, okay? If you knew me without the spirit of God, I would not be friendly at all, okay? With the Holy Spirit, I'm a little bit more friendly, right? A little bit more, okay? So, but I'm telling you right now, this is from the Lord for us, to receive his aloha, to decomai his aloha, to be open to it, but also to lambano his aloha, to take hold of it. And when you take hold of something like that, it transforms you. It transforms you. And how many of you guys want that for your life, your family, your sphere? Amen. Amen. Okay? So one of these, these areas, I could pray for you the other one because I'm Asian, okay? I could do that because that's, I'm, I'm like struggling through that myself, right? So I could pray that. But this area of aloha was because of our Hawaiian brothers and sisters. And I am so grateful for our Hawaiian brothers and sisters. I'm grateful for the partnerships we have in Hawaii. I'm grateful for the partnership that I have at Kewala Basin with Uncle Peter. I am grateful even though... Uh, it, uh, she doesn't always talk about it, but I'm grateful for Michaela Kobayashi because she's Hawaiian and she is so humble and yet there is such power and anointed that's released. We're praying before the service today and she had this powerful word. I'm like, okay, Michaela, you need to pray. You need to pray for us. You got to release this anointing because in order for us to embody aloha, we need the blessing from a Hawaiian. Amen. Do you guys, do you guys receive that word? Yeah. We need that. I know Mary's excited here. I'm excited too, man. So, you know, why don't you stand? And Michaela's going to come on up here. And she's going to, I don't know if you're going to say a few words, but she's going to pray for all of us that we can receive this, uh, this aloha. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Um, yeah, this morning as we were praying, I, I just felt like this phrase was coming to mind. And I felt like the Lord was putting on my heart, it's never too late and it's never too early to start living out a life of aloha. And I feel like it's kind of twofold in the sense of like, our, looking at our lifespan, maybe you might be thinking like, oh, well, that was not something that I really did or like, you know, whatever. It's never too late to start. Or if you're a young person, it's never too early to start living a life of aloha. But even on a daily, daily, like day to day, right? Like maybe you might start the morning and it might be challenging. It's never too late. Like it might be halfway through the day and you're like, oh man, I missed the opportunity. Like it's never too late to start living out aloha and it's never too early to start your morning with aloha either. And, um, and I wanted to share something that I shared with our youth group is as a Hawaiian, I wanted to give you permission to use the word aloha because I don't know if you might feel like this and even like I'm Hawaiian and I still feel like this where I'm like that's weird like I don't go around telling people like hey aloha guys you know like um yeah I don't like talk super pigeon I some people don't even know that I'm Hawaiian sometimes and I felt like God was give, telling me like I give you permission to say the word aloha, to use these words in your daily conversations. Um, and also that as a Hawaiian and from God, I feel like he wants to give you permission as well to yeah, use that word aloha, say it in your emails, you know, say it to people when you're, when you're talking to people or closing your prayer or whatever it is. Um, that you have permission to use the word aloha and to live aloha regardless of whether you are Hawaiian or not um, because it's truly from God as 
Daniel talked about, the source and the root really does come from the Lord. Um, but so I just want to pray an impartation over all of us, if that's okay. So you can just open up your hands and I'll pray for you. Lord, I thank you that um, this is Ohana and that you, you are our Makua, you are our Father. And it's from you that we've received this aloha. And so right now, I impart all of the aloha that you have given to me and my people, Lord, that you would impart it into us this morning as the ecclesia of MGMC and of Hawaii, Lord. That you would release even more your aloha, your akahai, your lokahi, your oluolu, ha'aha'a, and ahonui. May we be people that when others encounter us, they truly do encounter the spirit of aloha, whether it's in our families, our workplaces, the restaurants we go to, the beaches we hang out with, whoever we are surrounded with, God. May they truly experience your aloha through us because you have called us to be people of aloha. So I release even more now your permission to be the people of aloha that you've called us to be. So we love you, Lord. We thank you. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. That was so good. Wow. Okay. Did you, did you decomai that one or did you lumbano that one? You got to lumbano that one, man. That's such a good, good. Thank you for praying that. Thank you for sharing that. That's such a good word, guys. You know, because again, disqualification. I'm not Hawaiian, so I feel like I cannot really operate in that way, right? And that was so good. I th thank you so much for giving us that permission. And as you said, that's from the Lord. I could feel a shift in my spirit with that. You guys feel that too? Yeah, uh, several of us. This is so good, guys. Amen. Okay, so this is how we're going to seal the deal and close the service. Is we got the covenant cards up here. I'll put it on both sides. As, uh, as a prophetic act of lambanoing the aloha spirit and really taking hold of it, not just being open to it, but taking hold of it, I want you to re-sign, make a new covenant um, with the Lord. You know, re renew your covenant with the Lord on this Aloha series, you know, and, and you're going to do the, do the uh, uh, different things on the covenant, right? The, the number one, breathing in, breathing out with the Lord, receiving His Aloha. Number two, living aloha with your family, having these kind of discussions. Whether you do all three questions or you just do one of the questions, it's fine. But the point is that aloha is going to be a talking point in culture in your family, right? And then thirdly, you're going to go and give aloha wherever you go and where, uh, whomever you're with, right? Amen? So um, we're going to close the service. And as we, after we close, you come forward. You take one of these cards. You sign it, okay? Again, you're renewing the contract with the Lord. Okay, we get to start fresh again. We get to start fresh again. Um, and, and we're going to continue on in this Aloha series. This has been amazing. God is so good. God is so good. All right, well, let, let me thank the Lord on our behalf as we close up. Father, we just thank you so much, God. Thank you for what you are doing, Lord, in this service, Lord. We thank you, God, for those who are here with us in person and those online, Lord, who've renewed their covenants with you, who have remove the baskets from their head. Man, this is a breakthrough Sunday, God. I thank you, Lord God. It is what you have done and you are doing and you're continually doing in this ecclesia, your church. We thank you, God. And we pray that you would continue your good work in all of us with your beloved sons and daughters. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. All right.